Hey, this is Coach T. This is a video in the Python Quick Code series that I should have made way sooner, and I'm gonna I'm gonna upregulate this one to the top of the playlist uh, once it's out because I realized I kind of dove into methods, I dove into some mathematical operations, functions, and conditionals, and control flow, and all that stuff. And this is supposed to be a Quick Code series where I keep the videos trim as much as possible, and I'm trying to explain how to program in Python for the absolute real raw rocks beginner, which is where I started back in April. And granted, I had a little bit of help because I had done some computer programming in high school and I had some familiarity with HTML and CSS. But in April, I started at the the absolute basic, you know, beginner. Uh, so I was having a hard time with, with some of this stuff. And I thought this morning, as I was working through the end of my C-sharp fundamentals subcourse, uh, maybe I should back up and act like a real beginner for a second here and try to break down a couple of the syntactic concepts that I see people struggling with because just this morning on the Learn Python subreddit I saw a learner who was struggling with basic syntax like this it, there's a lot of people and it's okay it the I, I just typed off somewhere into the into the uh, Learn Python subreddit you know the cliff is really steep especially especially at the bottom when you're coming in and maybe you remember what some of these things are called from a mathematics course when you were in high school or middle school and now we're asking you or the programming world is asking you to learn a new definition to something that you've deeply patterned and that's it can be really really hard I know it was a stumbling block for me so in this video I'm gonna to try to keep this to like five minutes six minutes I'm just gonna go over a couple of really really basic concepts that you might feel either initially confused and discouraged by or maybe intimidated to ask about because maybe you feel like I often have that if I ask a question like this it might expose my own stupidity so I don't need you to ask the question and expose however you feel about it but I really hope that this video helps somebody who is just getting started so quick code is for adult learners like me or adolescent learners who are struggling and if it helps you leave a comment let me know it helped or you can just subscribe to the channel, share it if you have another learning community where there are newbies. The goal here is just to help. I'm not selling you anything and I don't want anything from you except to have helped. So the big idea for this quick video is the basic syntax for the Junior Snake Charmer, which is you, the Python coder, and me, the Python coder. So we have two things you really need to get your head around. There is the variable which could be any of a, of, a, of, a, of a range of different types of data, and those types will contain information that you assign to them. That's a fundamental principle in programming that you have to get your head around. We're not talking about variable as in math, like X or Y representing a numerical, uh, a, a, a numerical add end or factor. No, that's not right. One of those two, right? It's not representing that. Rather, we're talking about this variable data type that contains information. And then we also have very often, and as you're beginning, you're gonna use a lot of these and maybe not know how they're really working. We have something called a method call. And a method call has the name of the method, and then it has inside parentheses, always inside parentheses, you have one with zero or more arguments. And that tells the method what information you're passing into it. You often hear that in training videos and it's almost never actually explained. You are telling the print method, which is doing some things behind the scenes. It has abstracted that coding away from you so that you don't have to hard code in every single thing you want it to do. That's what abstracting means. It gets it away, it hides all the other stuff you are telling it to do something with this information. Now, a lot of times the method name tells you what it's going to do, but they can differ in different languages. Print hello world in Python is the equivalent to console.write line or console.write hello world in C sharp, like this. Very similar, right? You can kind of see we're going to write on a line on the console, which Python doesn't tell us, we're going to print hello world. It's basically the same thing. So if we really break this down, I'm going to knock it apart here so it's more obvious. We have the name of the method, 
and then we have the thing that the method is going to be working on, which is this string. Now it doesn't have to be a string that you pass in. This is a literal string, so whatever I put in here is exactly what Python is going to print. Python debugger, Python file, get rid of this, and it will say, hello world, right? It, in this case, Python doesn't care about the white space or the spaces I've introduced, but generally you wanna be very careful in Python about that white space because it can break things. So this is really the ideal way to write this. Now we have other forms of methods that are very, very common that you might be using, such as input. And in input, you do not need to pass an argument into it, but you can. And what that's going to do is, well, actually, I'll, sh I'll show you what happens right now. So I have my, my method call and my argument. This is a void method. It doesn't return anything, so it doesn't need to be tied to a variable. But if I run input without tying it to a variable, I get nothing. Nothing happened because the information that's being input, and look, I can type down here too. The information, and it exited, right? The information that I'm passing into input, once I call that function, it's opening up the console to read whatever I type. It's not being stored in a variable. So we need to have some sort of variable here. We'll, we'll call it user input is my defer, my preferred uh, name of that variable just because it's, I always know what it means. So now I have user input and anything that I type into the console at that point will be stored into user input. And we can check that by calling the print method again and then we can call user input. So now I'm going to be printing to the console whatever the value is stored inside user input. So let's check this out and see what happens. I get hello world and right away, I don't know if you noticed before I clicked on it, the, the, the cursor was an, a hollow uh, white box, which is telling me I can clue something in here. So I'll type in, what's up you razzle, dazzle, raspberry thieves? And it'll print it back at me, it echoes it back at me, right? That's not as far as we can go. And this is really where you need to look at the documentations for Python, whether it's on We3Schools or it's the Python uh, Foundation's specific information, uh, their documentation website. You need to actually look at what's going on inside these methods because there's something neat that we can do with input. I can type a string in here that says, type your name like this. And now whatever information that I pass in is not going to be this. This is not going to get stored because it's not the print method. Rather, input is still going to store whatever I type in into user input, but it's going to print this message to the console. It's a directive. Check this out. Hello world, type your name. Now I can type in coach T and it'll type it back out. I said before you can have zero or more uh, parameters or arguments being called in your method. So let, what happens if I do, uh, we'll do greeting. I'm going to call that variable greeting right here, plus in order to concatenate them, and then user input. Now I've got two different variables that are coming through this print variable. So if I type in coach T, I get hello world coach T because I am combining the, val the value stored in this particular variable, greeting, I'm combining it with user input. But you do need to be careful and here's where, here's where debugging your own work comes in handy. What did I do wrong? I get hello world coach T. Well there's no space here, that's the first thing that I notice. And it is a little bit strange to be calling it hello world, so what if I do hello comma space coach T. What do I get? I get hello coach T right down here. Oh you, you can't see it. Shoot. There we go. Okay so here was the original mistake. Uh, hello world coach T and then now I put that space and now I get hello coach T. Right, so there's a whole bunch that you can do with even simple methods like this as you begin to learn them.
but you got to slow down and you need to actually really think about what am I telling the computer to do? What's being stored where and what type, if that matters, and sometimes it does. And then also, what are the options that are available to me with even the basic methods? I'm not sure what they're called in, in, in Python, but in C Sharp, there are overloads of methods that are different versions or variants that you can call, and it's sensitive to how you call the method it will pick out the appropriate overload if possible. Python also has those for many of, especially the foundational methods. So you need to go look at the documentation. But hopefully what this video did is it, it gives you an idea of what a variable is doing at a very basic level. And I have another video that expands on variables. And then also, what is a method like this? And why do I need the parentheses? And then what goes inside the parentheses, if anything? You don't always need something in those parentheses, right? If you like this kind of headfirst video where I'm, I'm hopefully very practical and respectful of whatever level you're at as a learner, consider subscribing. I'm trying to produce not an infinite stream of videos on Python basics, that would be exhausting, but just enough stuff to help you get over the rocks and get into programming and coding so that you can go build stuff and that you can become self-empowered. That's what I'm trying to do. My name is Coach T. If you like it, consider subscribing. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.